Doctor, you have a book out titled Adrenologic. Can you talk about the adrenal glands and why they've, it seemed like they've gained a lot of attention in the last couple of years, mm -hmm. and why is that? I think the adrenal glands have been uh, the center of attention for quite some time um, because of the adrenal glands' ability to produce stress hormones. And everybody has stress and everybody mm -hmm. feels poorly. <laughs> and within the realm of conventional medicine, we're not really trained to diagnose the subtleties of abnormal stress hormone levels, we're taught to diagnose the extremes, mm -hmm. which are rare, relatively speaking. And so I think for that reason, people have had to self-treat and self-diagnose and have gone out seeking information, primarily about the adrenal glands, because those are the glands that make stress hormones, although there's a far more complicated interrelationship between other structures that actually ultimately result in stress hormone production, but I think that's why the focus is on the adrenals. Where are they? Where are so. the adrenal glands? And talk about their function a little mm -hmm. bit more. The adrenal glands are very small, uh, and they are located, there's one on top of each kidney. Okay. And uh, their function basically is to produce hormones that are responsible for what people refer to as the fight or flight syndrome. So during an acute stress response, when you're about to run into the back of someone's car, you have a rush of adrenaline or epinephrine, and that particular hormone along with another one called norepinephrine, which are made in the adrenals, go up immediately to allow your body to do certain things, which ideally are supposed to help you survive whatever stressor it is. Mm -hmm. And then cortisol goes up, but its actions are a bit delayed. And so it's there for hours or weeks later. And so it perpetuates the stress response. Now, ideally, those situations are supposed to be short-lived. But of course, that doesn't happen. And so people end up with all sorts of issues with their stress hormones, which then lead to all kinds of other problems. You're talking about the, the ongoing stress of a job or relationships, things like that, that compound. Well, not only that, but, but the stressors in our environment and the, and the chemicals and the okay. preservatives they put in the foods and the you know, pollution in the air and, and anything in that respect. And then also anything internal. If people have chronic diseases or they take prescription drugs. Anything that's foreign to the body, whether it's internal or external, really constitutes a stress.